Okay, let's start this. So, anyone here already using ASP.NET Core? Experimental one. Yeah. Experimental, okay. Me too, actually. <laughs> yeah. So this is experimental. So if something wrong with what I did, sorry, yeah? You can help me. So we do it together, seriously. Uh, rule number one, never update before presentation. So I just updated last night. <laughs> it was working normally and suddenly, yeah. But I managed to contact the, uh, the one that create this kind of thing, the open source, uh, and they say that, oh, easy, just use the lowercase letter, letter, and oh, okay, <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> so uh, yeah, everything is fine. Let's start. Uh, let's start this. So uh, first thing that I want to share with you, uh, the ASP.NET five is dead, meaning is that not just renamed. It's not only just renamed to ASP.NET Core. So there will be a lot of changes. So if you uh, follow up the ASP.NET, uh, the community, uh, this is not the Microsoft. Eh? The, I'm, when I say ASP.NET Core, it's the open source one. It's the one that is in GitHub. Okay? So I'm not going to talk about the .NET framework in here. No. For me, no. <laughs> so I'm just going to talk about the .NET Core. So uh, they rename it, and then they change something. For example, like the template to make it, to make it uh, similar, like for example, if you're a Ruby developer, you're a PHP developer, you are a, a, a Node, of course, uh, and when you use ASP.NET, it's supposed to be the same, okay? It's not like, wow, oh, ASP.NET is like a different story and then the other develop web development is different story. No. So they make it similar. In fact, it's, it's the same. The difference is only on the C-sharp code, but the entire, like for example, the, the code structure, the file structure is similar, very, very similar. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is uh, the package managers, uh, the task runners, and the extensions. So the package manager is uh, the one that, that is usually used when you do web development. Currently, uh, in Visual Studio or in the Microsoft ecosystem, we use what? New Get, isn't it? So, yeah, that one changed. It changed. So we use the nowadays the open source one. Okay, but we still have the new, uh, new Get package, but it's only for the DLL for the, dot, the for the .NET part, not for the the entire package. And then the task runners. The task runners is uh, to bridge between the content and the project itself. So put it like this. Uh, previously, when you create a build of ASP.NET, everything is in one Microsoft build, MS build file. You cannot tear it down. You cannot remove it. You remove one line, error. That's it. So the task runners uh, make it uh, separate. Later, I should uh, tell you which one the we use, actually. And the last one is extension. A lot of extensions now, the open source create, uh, you can go to Visual Studio Gallery, you can add in Visual Studio, or you can add uh, just using a command line like apd get in, if you're using Linux or Mac OS, okay? Okay, the first one is, I'm going to talk about, what is that? Bower, Bower yes. So this is a client side package. I'm going to show you later. Okay, this is a very small slide. Eh? It's like only like five slides. So uh, this one slide is ta uh, uh, telling you which uh, that I'm going to show the, uh, for the demo. So using Bower is for the client side, like the bootstrap. Previously, when you want to get a bootstrap or jQuery, you use NuGet, isn't it? And what happens if you remove and it's gone? You, it's very tight with Visual Studio. So your project is very tight with Visual Studio. So with this uh, Bower, if there's new update, let's put it like this. Let's say jQuery doing update or Angular doing update. They did not put in NuGet, they put in Bower. So why we pull from NuGet? The, the idea is like that. So that's why the, the .NET team say, okay, uh, let's get out from NuGet and go to Bower, okay? So the one that I'm going to show uh, later is using Bower. The next one, is the task runners. 
So this task runner is a, uh, it's like a MS build, but this one is for the, uh, the client side uh, process before they compile the code. Put it like this. Uh, previously in ASP.NET, bundling, even bundling CSS or minifying JavaScript, it requires C# -sharp code to do it. Why? We don't need that. It's just for minimi <laughs> minimize, you know, from the normal CSS into the less, for example, uh, using less, for example. It must use C#, -sharp. but using Task Runner, which is the standard one, people use Task Runner like the Grunt, Gulp to process that. Okay, and then after that, you can compile. So uh, at the beginning, the Visual Studio team, that this is what I know the story, they are very confused. How to make it work seamlessly with Visual Studio? Because Visual Studio is, is not an editor, it's an IDE. You, you be able to edit, you, be, you should be able to do anything with it. If it's just only editing and you save it, it's not IDE anymore, <laughs> it's just editor. You can use Sublime or you can use Visual Studio Code or you can use uh, Notepad++. So uh, they managed to make it in Visual Studio so the task runners can work with Gulp, Grunt, almost anything in the open source. In fact, you just edit. I'll show you later. It's a magic, something very magic. If you haven't tried, uh, that's good. If you try it, then you say, uh, okay, I know that. <laughs> okay. And yes, the engine is that Node Package Manager. So when you install Visual Studio 2015, actually also install Node Package Manager. It's installing Node.js inside. So uh, some Developer asked me like this, so is it the Node.js part will be part of the project? No, it's only to execute the task runners. It's only to execute the bower. There's nothing got to do with Node.js. You still, you have, you still have the uh, full, fully c -sharp .net at the back end. So this is only for, for the client side part. Okay. <clears throat> and then they think like this. So we have this task runner, everything. Why we do that? So the Visual Studio team thinks like make it first class citizen. So they wanted to make these tools a first class citizen in the Visual Studio. So it's not like something you add, you know, you it's not like someone making it for you, no, it's a first class citizen. So if you use, for example, uh, the normal command line and you use the Visual Studio, anything you change in the command line, it reflects in the Visual Studio. Anything you do in Visual Studio, it's the same it's reflecting the one that's in command line. Okay, okay. if you're confused, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do the demo and you'll see what I mean, okay? And then there's no Visual Studio specifics at all. There's no related. In fact, you create this even using Visual Studio and then you copy the entire folder, you open in Linux or Mac, you still can develop ASP.NET. No need Visual Studio. Visual Studio not required there. But the old one, ASP.NET, you cannot. You have the solution file, you have the bunch of stuff. You remove something, error. You add something, you need to add in the project. But this one is not. Okay, so it's very open. And then extensible, yes, extensible. So you can create your own process or you can create your own stuff, tooling, okay? It's a thousand of tooling for Visual Studio for the web development now because of this. It just what, it's a Visual Studio 2015, so nearly one year, but the tooling is already like, you can just find in the Visual Studio gallery or you can go to GitHub and it's all open source, that's a good thing. And the last one, it's optional. It's optional. You can use it or you're, you're not. So it's not like uh, when you create a project, you must use this, you must use this. Remember the old ASP.NET? You must follow the, 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 the MS build way. But this one is not, it's optional. You can even tie ties with uh, GitHub, you can ties with, for example, like the team service, 
uh, Visual Studio Team Service or using TFS, Team Foundation Server, the more enterprise one, then you can use this kind of thing. Okay. So what we're going to do now is showing this. Node, Package Manager, Bower, Grand CLI, Gulp, and Git. So any one of you uh, doing full .NET framework before? Of course, eh? you, yeah. Okay, and next is Nemo. Nice, this is what I love. Yes, Nemo. Okay, maybe before the demo, uh, any question, maybe? Anyone wants to ask something? No? Okay, good. So I'm going to open also my command line. So this Visual Studio command line, let's make it smaller. Boom. And then this is Visual Studio. And I'm going to show you, this is, I just create one, which is the old HP.NET, just to sh share with you what is the difference. So I open this, I choose this one, remember? And then uh, when you click OK, there's an option. This is what I choose. So this is the file that you see now. Here, the solution, which is why I suddenly closed that. Yeah. So this is the file. So I'm going to show you what happened for the bundling. You see this bundling config is a C sharp. Look at this. Even for jQuery validate. Why on earth a jQuery file for client side is doing in C sharp? Uh, the, the idea is like that. So this this thing is is doesn't make sense. So this is the, the, the ASP.NET Core. So they take that out. So for managing that kind of like bundling, modernizer, even bootstrap. You see, bootstrap. Just imagine if you want to change something for the bootstrap. What do you have to do? Recompile. You want to rebundle something, you have to recompile. Okay, that's the old way. That's the old ASP.NET, okay? So the new ASP.NET is this. I'm going to create one. Doesn't matter. You don't have to choose this. You just choose this. Don't add source control yet. And this is the template. You already know this, okay? So I'm going to create an empty template first, empty template, and I'm going to open it and view it. Restoring packages, and let's go to the folder. Yeah, this is folder. Just gonna copy this. So this is the entire project that you see, and this is this the one that you see compared to this one is totally different. If you look at this one, you cannot just remove or delete file in here. It will not work. Okay. So this one is just a file folder. So what you see in here is actually only a file folder. Okay. Okay, in this in this laptop, in my laptop, I already install npm. I already install. I already have npm. Okay, so if you haven't used the uh, installed npm, you can. There's two ways. You just install Visual Studio, or you install separately npm. This is the Node Package Manager. So if you go to the npm, <laughs> yeah, yeah, npm. Yeah, this one, yeah. Okay. So you just download and install this for Windows. The other one that I already installed 
is oh yeah not yet one by one because I uh, I said to you I'm going to demo this so put it like this the one that I do in console is exactly the same if you do it in Linux or Mac okay so this one I'm not going to I actually I have Linux in here uh, but I'm not going to do it because it's the same the command line is entirely the same there, there's no different okay because we only see the command line okay let's start now I'm going to add because this is, a, if you run this, you just a, a normal hello world kind of thing showing in here. Just to make it fast. See this, only a hello world, nothing fancy there. So I'm going to delete this, I'm going to uh, use static file. You see this, you can, they know that you need to add this. That's why they call it IDE, and they edit the library automatically in here, which is the, yeah. Actually, you can remove this one. Later, I will uh, show you. So this is the static file that I use, and then I'm going to use app dot use default files. Here it is. Okay. So use default file is, for example, if you want to use the HTML or uh, whatever uh, default file you want. So this one, the dub 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 root, is similar if you, for example, you create an express, or you create a Ruby. There is a dub 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 root. So actually, it's the same thing. Look at this on the right side here, and this is the file. Look at on the right side. I will create one file here. Look at on the right side. You see this? They're showing in here. Yeah, just put it index lah. For example, what the hell is that? Okay. You see this index? Is it? Or if you delete in here, you see, you will de delete, and also it's gone in here. So it's a file. In the old ASP.NET, you cannot do that. When you delete, and suddenly that's wiggly uh, red line, okay? So that's, uh, this is only a folder. You see, this is the dub 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 root. It's only the folder, and this one is the folder. So I, I'm going to create one. There's two ways to create this. Uh, if you use the ASP.NET, uh, sorry, if you use the Visual Studio 2015 with the web tooling, you just can create Shift F2. Just press F Shift F2 and you can create this. You just put where, where you want to create, and then I just index.html. Okay, see they just create, you see that, in dub 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 root. The good thing is that, for example, you can do like this. Uh, lib, for example, uh, yeah, whatever. For example, like site.less, or yeah, site.less, for example. See, they create the library folder directly. So you don't have to remember the old ways. You have to do like this, you do like this, and then you folder, you know, and then you create the file one by one, okay? So that's uh, one thing. So to create HTML also, currently, well, if you like editor, then it's good. But if you use this, anyone, anyone knows how to create the skeleton of HTML? With only one line. HTML tab. Yes. You just HTML5 tab. Yeah. So if you don't know this, good. <laughs> Use it. This. Okay. And how to create, for example, like, like, have you tried this? Have you tried this? Okay. So this is the, this is the difference between IDE and an editor. Okay, this is IDE. And the good thing is, you see this one? It will show you the intelligence. So the intelligence is even for Angular, it's available. Okay, so this is the difference. So I'm just put something here.
โอเคบีรับ so now if I run this I should be able to see this in okay very simple so I'm not going to talk about MVC here so I'm just going to talk about the ASP.NET Core uh, the pro, the web tooling so now how do how do we get the bootstrap for example let's say I want to use bootstrap I want to use jQuery okay so previously what did you do if you use the first one you go to NuGet remember you go to this and then you go to the package manager you open the console and then you install package uh, jQuery is it that's what you do isn't it and then you do like this and they will download all the entire jQuery you know the problem with this there's no problem with this the problem is every time jQuery updated this one is not so one of the guy in Microsoft as far as I know his name is Scott Hanselman doing this <laughs> so if there's update in Bower they convert it into NuGet package and then headache <laughs> you cannot do that over one time two time yes but you, you're like if the update is like every week then you're dead okay so that's why we move they move it to Bower just use Bower lah you know something like that okay so let's use Bower but this one is the web and this one is the project there's two ways you can do this first you can do npm install bower global okay you can just install this you do, do it in command line okay if the internet is running wow. Yeah, just wait for it or the other way you use the IDE like I said to you this one is uh, following whatever changes in the in the open source okay so you can do like this look at this I will add new item Bower is available you see Bower configuration file later I'm going to use gulp file sorry gulp okay npm it's all there okay and this one is up, uh, up the, uh, automatic updated every time there's new stuff it will be here so let's try Bower first you see what I'm talking uh, uh, you, you're going to see what's the difference so Bower JSON see what happened with the this one Bower JSON okay let's say you see this the logo ah now it's available yeah and the good thing is for example like this one IntelliSense okay so if you don't remember Bower well there's two ways you buy the book or you print the PDF look what is the command okay the other way the properties is just do like this you'll see all the stuff okay and it's easy okay so let's add what bootstrap bootstrap what you see there is pulling from Bower from, GitHub. from the github yeah through Bower server okay so the same thing as you do like this Bower search bootstrap am I right there so you can choose you want a command line you do like that if you don't know which one but this one in Visual Studio I can just do like this bootstrap and they will okay this one oh forget to tell you this one still RC not final release okay so sometimes I have to do like this to get the <laughs> yeah see 
So I can get this, I can get this, I can get this. See what happens if I choose, for example, like look at these dependencies. Okay? I'm going to choose this and I'm going to save. Yeah, whatever. Just save it. Tabify, whatever. See what happened. You see, they pull everything from Bower, okay, and then include the one that's the dependencies, okay. So this one, if there is new update, you just update, or you just stick with that. No more C sharp. You see, there's no C sharp in there. It's only this one. There's no C sharp. It's nothing got to do with C sharp. It's just a Bower file. So if this file you move it into Linux or Mac, you still can do it. You can still can do it, okay? If you're using a different version of jQuery in your application. Okay, so for example, this one is jQuery is pulling uh, on depend, sorry, this bootstrap depend on this jQuery. Yeah. yeah. But if you, let's just say in your project you're using jQuery 1.5 or something. Uh, as far as I know, NPM will pull it, the latest one, with that dependencies. Because the dependencies uh, related to that one, so that's why sometimes in npm you see a lot of in folder. You know, you go inside, inside, inside. It's too many folder. As far as I know, also uh, actually they try to make it efficient. So it's not like 200 folders to the <laughs> to the right. It's like too many index. Okay, it's it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be like only one jQuery for the entire system, for example. Configuration file. There's any version that you want. For example, you can open Bower and add jQuery. Yes. Link, yeah. You, and yeah. you can specify which version you want. From example. Yeah. Yeah. If you know the version, you can. Yeah. yeah you can just. You can yeah. specify with jQuery here also. Yeah. You can also do like this jQuery. And then you choose the version. <laughs> yeah. But they always show the latest one lah. So usually it's always the latest one. Uh, the rule is uh, modern web development always update framework library. Okay, that's the rule. There's no such thing like, for example, okay, I'm using the modern browser, the new Chrome, the new Edge, whatever, but you're using the old jQuery. That, that's not. The, the, as far as I know, in modern web apps development, you have to use the latest one. Always get the latest one. Uh, this one is, I prefer this one. <laughs> So if I save or I uh, I do update, they will get the latest one, okay? But uh, yeah, or even for example, Angular, yeah, Angular available here because it's 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 the same thing, the same thing that the PHP developer use it, Ruby developer use it, it's the same thing, okay? So what you what you use in here, you see, they add restoring. It's like that. Now, can I use uh, do in here? It can because the uh, the Bower file is already available. Okay, they will do the same. So, for example, like Bower install jQuery. Okay, they will install it for you. They even add it in the file. Oh, it's already validated. Okay. Yeah, they even add inside the Bower JSON file. So even you're opening Visual Studio, you still can use the command line, because like I said to you, there's no Visual Studio specific; it's separate. Okay, that is the ASP.NET Core, and this is the web tooling for Bower. Okay, uh, of course you can add more than this. Okay. Okay. Any question before I continue with the next tooling? Yep. Is it currently supported in Azure? Yes. Azure. 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 Okay. Web apps. This one is nothing got to do with Azure actually. Yeah. Because this one is only for web development. Oh, that one is the project. You just right click and deploy. If you want to deploy to AWS, you want to deploy to Azure, you want to deploy to Google Cloud, you just publish. Yeah, but currently I only have this Azure. Yeah, 
if you install the, for example, like the other cloud, and then you will see in here, you see in Cloud Explorer, you will be able to see in here. Yeah, and it's available. You just go, for example, AWS, you will see everything, the service of AWS. All you have to do is just publish there. That's it. Uh, you have to choose the VM or, yeah. Uh, remember, ASP.NET Core, you can run anywhere, okay? Uh, yesterday, not yesterday, two days ago, I tried a new nano server. You, you, have you heard that? Nano server is, uh, is the minimum version, super, super minimum version of Windows uh, server. Yeah. So the size, uh, the it's very, there's no UI, there's no GUI, everything is command line, and it's very small. How many, huh? How many megabytes? As far as now, it's uh, the same, almost the same like FreeBSD or, yeah, very small. Okay. The footprint is very small. Uh, the CPU usage is like 1%, less than 1%. The memory, you know, it's very small. So that one is for clustering. You have a multiple, it's for containers actually, the same, the same thing. They call it nano server. So you can test this in nano server. And it, it, you can download. You just download, create a uh, Hyper-V, whatever you use, and then you install. It's a Windows server, but it's, they call it nano server. OK? Nano server. Uh, in Linux, of course. I also use Linux. I use uh, a lot of Linux. Uh, OK, now, you already have this. And then. How are you going to use it? For example, you want to use the bootstrap. You already have the bootstrap here. You see this? They put it in here. Okay. Now, how are you going to use it in the, the, in the, uh, when you do compiling, for example? For example, like this. When I compile, before I compile the C sharp, I want to compile the boot, uh, the CSS, my CSS file. I want to compile, I want to minify my JavaScript or uglify in something like that. So, the, yeah, that's why we use the grunt or glob. Okay? So, well, you need to bring the package in because it's a tooling. Uh, some developer maybe ask, okay, uh, Visual Studio is a tool. Why we have a, a, a tooling? It's a web tooling, tooling for web. For example, you already have a big machine, but sometimes you need a screwdriver to do it, okay? You have a big machine, you know, to create a lot of machineries, but there's some item that you need a screwdriver to do it. Just put it like that, okay? So how to do that? It's very easy. Number one, all you have to do, just add, the package, the NPM, to bring the gulp in. So this project has no tooling, web tooling, yet. Will this go to the, uh, when you publish to a cloud or your server? No. It's only the C-sharp part. This one is the tooling for the project. It's nothing got to do with the project, okay? So whatever you see in here, it's not going to go to the server, no. Okay? Uh, let's add new item, and then we call it package. Yeah, here it is. You see this? Package. And I get this, you see? I got it yesterday. And I was freaking out. <laughs> because uh, previously when I, I, I do several times the, doing demo, for example, it was supposed to be okay. But suddenly I saw this, oh my God. And this is NPM. Is this NPM? What is happening? And you see this? If you go to the, you, you know where this thing came from? Like for example, like if I type something in here, they show the this. You know where it came from? Not not only for Visual Studio. I will show you where. It's from here. Yep. It's from here. I know not a lot of developer knows this. Actually, it's from here. It's open source. Yeah. 
grant anything that you type, the intelligence come from here. And this is open source in the GitHub. You just contribute. If you think that, oh, this one is wrong, then change. So that one, the package JSON is came from this. There. Pulling directly from the internet. Okay? No, uh, when you install this video, they have the default one. If you have internet, they will try to pull the latest one. Just put it like that, okay? Uh, so this is actually a bug. <laughs> they told me to just use, yes. They say just use lowercase <laughs> and the error is gone. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> So this is the template for the package. See what, what I'm going to do? Type gulp. Look at that. Again, pull from NPM. This one is pull from NPM. OK? So if you don't know what is it, you just type it. They will tell you. There's two ways. You can, again, you can NPM install. Gulp. I think we have to use minus, minus G or not? No. Yeah. Yeah, I just use minus G. Yeah. So the same thing like you do this. Okay? The same thing. There. This is the power of Node.js. That's why I love it so much. Seriously. You just imagine if you don't have this, ah, you have to find the file, download, remember? The old ways, unzip, using RAR. You just imagine that. So for, for the, the developer, web developer that never used the open source, this one, something new. Actually, it's not. It's very old. But it's getting better, getting better, OK? So if you use it for development using other, like I try PHP, I try Ruby, this one is like standard thing. It's a normal thing, OK? But it's getting better. So, gulp. Let's see what's version. Okay, I'm gonna take this. See again on the dependency side. You see there's no NPM here, empty, you see? Let's save this. Look at that. Look at that. The pull gulp. So the same thing like I did this. Exactly the same thing. Okay, but that one is inside Visual Studio. The difference is in, in console, you see something like this, and you have to know what you want to do. In Visual Studio, you can trial out, type this, you know, something like that. Even gulp less, for example. Look at that. It's available because it's the same thing. Save it. Okay, uh, I remember there's a. Uh, uh, who wants to know Angular 2? Uh, you the one who wants, okay. Uh, I'm still learning actually. So apparently it's not from Bower. Must be NPM install. So it's actually is in here. <laughs> Angular 2 is in here. See? It's not from Bower. Angular 1 is from, yeah. Angular, the Angular first Angular is in Bower. But Angular 2, you need to this. And when you install this, they will install a lot of stuff inside. So when I try that, OK, I have to admit, fail. <laughs> yeah, because I'm still learning. No, it's not fail. It's working, but it's, it's not a good subject for me to share with you. Maybe uh, Singapore.js is the best place for, yeah. <coughs> yeah, next time, maybe I will try there. But for Angular 2, you have to use NPM to install. It's not Bower. This one? can but angular 2 this one you need to use Angu uh, npm to install you can install it from power because only microsoft doesn't support yeah. something like uh intellisense here but you can install it i i can do like this i thought it's the same thing <laughs> apparently it's not <laughs> it's, this is not angular 2 <laughs> yeah this is not angular 2 See, it's Angular 1 actually. So uh, it's, uh, yeah, different. 
I, uh, I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. You can, you can, you can share to me if, uh, yeah. So, yeah, this is the correct one. <laughs> now it's beta 7, okay? And it's, it's, it's not easy to set up because you need to know uh, a bunch of stuff as well. Well, anyway, let's try this. Now I already have the uh, gulp and the gulp rest. Actually, I, uh, what I need is only gulp. All I have to do is now configure this. For example, I want to have a separate folder for my production or for my testing or whatever. So that bootstrap, I will copy to that folder before it compiles, before I publish, you know, something like that. So the idea is using gulp. So how to do that? You can, using, you can use command line or again, right click. You see when I do like this on the right side, I'm not doing inside the content. I'm using the project file, okay? Add new item gulp. Look at that. Yes. They even put this helping hand. <laughs> so let's delete this. Yeah. The good thing is in if you use Visual Studio, for example, not Visual Studio code, uh, if you're still learning, see what I did. You see that? I just tap, tap, double tap. They will create it for you. Or if you want to just create the, ta the task, tap. OK? So what is this? This is a Node.js. It's a Node.js. It's a JavaScript. So the tooling for ASP.NET Core is using JavaScript. You see? Wow. OK. Okay, now let's copy. Let's say, for example, I want to copy. I want to copy my file. So how, how to do this? Anyone knows how to copy file? Gulp or source. Yes, gulp dot source. So the source is bootstrap this. Okay. So the source is. Dub 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 root lib uh, bootstrap this dot css that's right css sorry yeah and then because it's using piping Look at this. Look at the intelligence. So this is the method. It's like you do coding in C sharp. This is the JavaScript method using Node, but it has intelligence. And the good thing is the intelligence is not just like that. Look at that. There is an explanation. OK? So this is not only like autocomplete something. No, it's not like that. So this really, really understand, oh, you're going to do, to do this. So the same like the normal intelligence. So they give you suggestions. You can even uh, debug this. OK? So uh, stream, what is the stream? There's no stream. Gulp dot. Uh, destination and the folder I'm just going to create this put it in here and I'm going to put it my CSS delete all is that all? So this one is telling you, copy this part to this part, okay? 
So you can now execute this copy by using the task runner. So what is task runner? If you go to the view here, where is it? Ah, here it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> Hello, refresh. Ah, here it is. <laughs> Sorry, start. So if I double click this, I will execute this. See what happened in here? You see in the there, there is no CS there is no CSS sorry there is no CSS folder so I'm going to create a CSS folder in here and then copy the entire CSS to this folder so what I'm going to do is just double click this they will execute and they will copy if I can refresh this how do I refresh this it's supposed to be showing here did I make a mistake it's empty. Okay, there's no error. Uh, okay, what did I do wrong? Hmm? Shouldn't the destination be a folder name, not the URL? Oh, you are right. <sighs> Thank you. Save, double click. Yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's how you do it. Now, how you tell Visual Studio, hey, Visual Studio, before you compile my C Sharp, before you compile the, the things that is run on the server, and this is for the web, for the client side, do something. So all you have to do is just go to the binding. Choose which one, before build, after build, or clean up. Clean up meaning that you just want to clean, clean this folder, for example. There is no, no folder. Usually, they use a clean first, do this, do that, you know, something like that. So you just put this before build, still running. <laughs> Before build, <laughs> okay, this is what happened if it is, cannot be, oh, sorry, I have to work, put it in here. Before build. So if I compile the C, uh, the C sharp, it's a normal compiling, I just compile this, rebuild, see what happened. So they compile the gulp first, copy the entire CSS, and then they compile the C sharp. Ah, that's how you do it now. That's how you do it, okay? So this one, if you want to change something, you don't have to go to the C-sharp. No need to change the C-sharp code. Anything that is already run in the server, all you have to do is just change the gulp file, for, uh, not the gulp file, the, the, the bower or the package JSON. And then all you have to do is just execute it in command line, for example, bower or gulp. Okay, I can do like this, for example, because it's already there. I can do like this. Gulp, copy. Then it will execute. The same thing is on command line. The same thing. Okay, so this is how you do it now in ASP.NET Core. The tooling. Confused? No? Not, not confused. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. So the last thing, for example, okay, this one, anyone can do it, okay? What happened if, for example, I want a more, little bit more complex? I, I want to uglify. I want to minimize my CSS, you know, something like that. Well, the old ways, you go to the C-sharp, you go to the bundle and do something with it, okay? And here, you just use the gulp. So you just do like this. Number one, because in here, we already have, have Gulp less. See what happens if I do like this. I'm going to add another, call it less, for example. Require. If you don't know, uh, sorry, uh, note, then you need to learn it. See what happens if I do like this. 
you see that they know you have this module inside your project so they show it in they show it the gobless okay if you remove the gobless you save it you cannot see that anymore okay so that, that's very powerful intelligence now let's do this gob sorry gob task okay uh, less let's do the same thing before that see less over here I'm going to add my own library here call it less uh, oh, sorry anybody don't know what is less oh, okay uh, Currently in CSS, for example, if you want to change something, you need to find the item. Let's say, you, for example, you want to change a uh, color, color that's similar. So less is like the derivative of the CSS. So they give you the ability to, for example, like variables, properties. So you can execute in the CSS, in the CSS way. Okay. So uh, if you're not using less, well, you still can use CSS, but CSS is the final product. It's like the finished compiled product, something like that. So if you want to change something, you have to find it. Let's say you, for example, you have, you have a, a CSS telling you the, the color red, that you have like how many elements, how many, uh, how many uh, class, 10 of them red, but you want to change all of them to blue. What did you do if CSS? You have to change one by one. You have to change which one is red, <laughs> which one is red, one by one, one by one. So using less, you can replace that with variables. You replace that with variables. All you have to do is just go to the less file, and then you change the blue. And then you compile using the gulp. It becomes CSS. Ah, OK, let's do that. Good idea. <laughs> OK, let's create that one. Add, look at this. Ah, less available in Visual Studio. SAS, less, it's available in Visual Studio. Okay? It's here, it's all here. Let's name it variables. Variables. There. Delete this. Let's make a. How to make this? <laughs> uh, some color. Uh, red. Okay. Who's expert in less? And then what I'm going to do is to create another one call it site oh, which is already here let's do that so let's say body background background color eh? and then oh I have to import you can do like this actually you can you see you can oh I don't know that hmm Okay, cool. <laughs> no, seriously. When is that? Oh, maybe after the update. Nice. Okay, cool. You can do like this. Because this is a last file, import. Ah, look at that. Do you know you have another last file in there? Just import variables. And in here, you change to not working. So it must be wrong. Hmm? Which one? This one?
no, this one is wrong. Yeah. Suddenly I become blank. <laughs> can anyone help me? What is how to make a variable in less? Michael, maybe you can help? I'm just sass, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. As far as memory is using, yeah. Why did you bing it, huh? Why did you bing it? Why don't you go to the website? I'm sure you'll find out from the left. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Less. Less CSS. <laughs> Less CSS, yeah. Uh, variables, eh? Yes. Yes, CSS variables. Disrupt, disrupt, disruptive innovation, not this one. CSS3, yeah. Huh? This is CSS3, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm bec suddenly become blank. But, but I tried before, yeah. yeah. I tried before. No, not this one. Uh, anyway, okay. Anyway, so this one, then it's supposed to be some color. <laughs> no, because I remember, or maybe it's a bug. No, it's supposed to be when I use the add, it will show the variable from that this. Or oh, maybe I have to say first. No, <laughs> no, undeclared variables. Okay. So that means my variable is wrong. Uh, maybe just like that. No? What about equal? Oh, OK. Uh, why do you use the, why do you use the hex, hex code rather than the word grid? Uh, no, I, I tried right that. that, that. <laughs> uh, Paul, any idea? Oh. No, no, I did it. I did it. I just forgot how to add variable in less. Because uh, in, in, my, in my time, I use CSS. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, less CSS.org. Less, less, less CSS.org. CSS.org. Yeah. Oh, too many S. Yes. Uh, language features. Huh? The top. So the language features. The top left. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, this is an example here. You see? Oh. Yeah. Oh, I put a book. You put a semicolon at the back? Oh, OK. Semicolon at the end. You did. I did. Or maybe you're right. You need, we need to put some color. Yeah. Like that? <laughs> Not working. Oh, this one. Ah. <laughs> it's a semicolon. <laughs> Damn it, less. Yes. Red. Back to red. <laughs> yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. That's. That's cool. Wow. Okay. Now let's do the because less. If you use less uh, HTML, don't understand the browser. Like, what is that? You need to make it as a CSS. Okay. So let's do this. Let's do this. Come on. Where, where's the file? <laughs> Gulp. Here it is. So uh, all I have to do is now less before the destination less dot uh oh no no like this yes and then ah okay yeah i remember this then you pipe yep compress Am I right? Wrong. Do I need another pipe? Uh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Pipe. Yep, makes sense. Yeah, but you need to go 
Ya. Let's check it out. Yes. See? Wow. Okay. Just to prove, is it really? <laughs> I just want to prove myself. Sorry. Why is not showing? Compress. Did I? It's supposed to be like this, isn't it? Why is showing now? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, put it like this. Maybe it's R RC la. Yeah. Always blame the editor. Don't yeah. don't blame us. Don't yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's try this. CSS. So the output will be from lip. Less. Yes. And the output will be yeah. So this one will be. Before another pipe. Hmm? You need to close one brackets before another pipe. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Correct. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's one that is. Let's try again. No, it's not working. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, let's try this. Let's save. Double click. Look at this, eh? Supposed to be have a, we should supposed to have a put it just make it clear. Site only. Okay? Because site is going to use the variables, so technically they will pull. Yeah, it's working. Yay! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, but I remember when I type compress, it's showing the. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's because the update. <laughs> no, sir. I remember when I type compress, then I know there is a compress in in the variable. So now I get this site less. So if I just put this in the header, pull in here, boom, done. So I get site CSS, and then what? Bootstrap, boom, done. Okay, and. If we run it, of course, it's going to be like a normal. Yes, that's it. Okay. Okay. So the final part is actually if you cr open the project, which the one that is already created as a template, is this one. So this one is a complete example of what the one that we already did. Uh, but this one is MVC, so it's a complete set of this kind of thing. So if you open the new template in ASP.NET Core, no more shock because you already know. Oh, this is how they do it. Okay, so this is the ASP.NET Core. You see, they all have the Gulp file, which is inside is this. Wow, they use Uglyfy, Webroot. Everything. This all is no JS file. Okay, there's nothing got to do with your C sharp. So this one is only a web tooling, tooling to create stuff. So if you open the task runner, you open the task runner here. You'll see the bunch of clean JS, clean CSS. Where is it? Here it is. Yeah, there they are. Clean. Okay. So you can bind this, for example, like clean, clean. Before build, which one you want to build? You want to minimize or you don't want to minimize because you're in, for example, for testing only. You don't want to minimize, for example. So you can tell Visual Studio, do this, do this, do this with Gulp. I was amazed that they managed to marriage the Node.js in Visual Studio. So when I saw this, like, wow, this is amazing, something that that is uh, never done before in Microsoft, as far as I know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. That's all I got, actually. Because actually, the second one, Ujwal, is not showing. <laughs> so, that's all I got, actually. I was supposed to have one hour. I tried to make it like one hour and a half. <laughs> so, anyway, if you have any questions, maybe? Yeah. I try to answer. If I don't know, then share with someone. Yeah. Any questions? No? 
What is the future for these technologies now? What do you see that there are hundreds of technology now? You know? Okay. Uh, in, in terms of technology, this is what I see. But take it personally. Even I work in Microsoft, please take it personally. Uh, Microsoft is moving to the right way. Previously, maybe it's left, right, left, right. Now he's, yeah. He's supposed to be like this. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my personal opinion. Okay. Uh, uh, and it, it is. It is. For example, like they acquire Xamarin for uh, C Sharp, something like that. They're, they're going to make something. Okay. So, uh, as far as I know, uh, this is the right way to create web. Web development is for everyone. Web is for everyone. Yeah. yeah. All in your hand, like it's not going to your desktop. It's all in your laptops or the laptop or the yeah. or the pads using. Exactly. Yeah. So, according if you see that that one software is going to develop each like application which can be used on any yeah. platform. You know. Yes. In that scenario, you think that this thing can be done, or there are other softwares available in the market which challenge that you can develop application can which can be used on any platform. Uh, well, this one's already open source. You can create your own, for example. This, 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 this yeah. Uh, yeah, can. can yeah. So this one is already open. It's open source. So this one, uh, one of my friends is using Mac computer, Mac laptop, for doing this. Exactly the same. But uh, the 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 worst nightmare for them is they said to me, it's like there's no Visual Studio. <laughs> so they have to know what you are doing. Like the command line, anything that I do in Visual Studio here. So Visual Studio with the this NPM is just a proxy. So actually, what I did is actually executing this in behind. They're executing this in behind. Visual Studio executed. Yeah, that's why uh, someone is asking, for example, if there's new tooling NPM, will Visual Studio cannot be used anymore, or we have to wait for new Visual Studio? No need. You just upgrade the NPM, which is easy. NPM, install, NPM, mini G. Yeah, that's like that. They will get you the latest one. That's it. So every time you use the Visual Studio, it will be the latest one. Yeah, because this one is only tooling. There's nothing got to do with the C Sharp. So even if you look at the HTML, look at this HTML. Any C sharp code here? This one only. Any C sharp? You see any C sharp code in here? This is Razor. But you see any C sharp code? Only, okay, on the top, that one. That one is for telling you you can still use the old way. But in the new way, ASP.NET Core, there is no more C sharp inside the HTML. Yeah, there's no more. So what happens if the file suddenly goes out and you open it in the browser? They just open it <laughs> because there's no code. There's no business code in here. So what they do is they replace with so-called the tech helper, which is this one. For example, like uh, OK. That one is not a good example. Here, tech helper. Yeah. This is a valid HTML5 element. So if you run it in the browser, the browser just read it but don't care about it. Because browser is a fault tolerant. OK? So you can put and you can throw anything. But don't do that, please. <laughs> OK? Don't just throw garbage inside the HTML file. OK? But the thing is now uh, you can point this environment. So the C sharp Visual Studio knows that this environment at behind is actually a C sharp code. It's a C sharp code, yeah. So this one is, for example, like ASP fallback. This is a C sharp code. So call it tech helper. There is a code behind it. You can create your own tech helper. So your HTML will be pure HTML5. Pure. No more. Uh, it's not a mix between language and between language and uh, the HTML no more. So in the HTML, uh, ASP.NET Core, HTML, HTML, 
okay c sharp c sharp javascript javascript yeah something like that yeah but the thing is you still can use the old way you still can use. that's why they they put this like this one this is the old way remember yeah yeah i don't know the other than that uh, the feature that, that, that is what i observe yeah because i'm not part of the <laughs> the developer team i try to follow the community uh, the ISP.NET core and then my email is like one day is like 100 200 <laughs> and then i stop i stop following the team it's too many too many to follow yeah yeah any more question maybe you want to ask something before yeah c sharp can zamarin can whatever yeah yes so just have one question uh no js yes. how, how would you use that in a .NET project like for yourself i mean if you're a development project where would no js come into picture uh for the for the if you like developing a .NET project say mvc and everything mm -hmm. the model binding where would you actually use no js uh the other one is only for tooling now they, 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 if you look at this this tooling is all using Node.js stuff. Yeah, but I mean, like, yeah. you use Node.js on a personal level if you Oh, yeah, Express. I use Express. Yeah, yeah that one's for, uh, because, uh, I love JavaScript, yeah. because I use JavaScript since Netscape. Yeah. yeah. It's not just new, it's since, so <laughs> yeah. So you use Node.js as the back end, like, as well as your C-top code? Uh, so far, for, for hobby, yes. But for production, I haven't do it. Because the, uh, that time, all my customers, when I haven't worked in Microsoft, is asking for backend using either PHP or ASP.NET. That time, yeah, yes. In US, maybe Ruby, as far as I know, yeah. But for most enterprise, as far as I know, enterprise, maybe I'm wrong. It's ASP.NET. They always ask ASP.NET. That, that's as far as I know. Am, am I correct? Yeah. yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that's that's what I know. Yeah, but uh, like I said to you, this is uh, what I share to you is not about wants to be the best. No, it's not that. They are all all good tooling. Okay, everything is good. You can as long as you can develop web easily in any platform, that is done. That's good. Yeah. So now ASP.NET, it's part of that part of the ecosystem. Yeah. Anyone can can do some uh, some I know that they already develop using Linux and really really for uh, real stuff real world stuff is 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 not testing anymore in, yeah okay any more question no yes so can you use this uh, tooling for other project types like regular C sharp non ASP uh for C sharp actually you can use it yeah this one but the i mean the real usage for project i still don't 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 know what what, what is the benefit of Just for yeah example, this custom build actions yeah and like using yes, visual, uh, yeah uh, because usually it's like right now you should go in the project file and in xml put some before build after build so if you can use something like golf to do some Updating, for example. So, for example, if you want to build a Nugget package yeah. after build. Yeah. So, could you use uh, these tasks for other presentations? I haven't tried this yet. It's a good idea. We should try that. <laughs> yeah. For building some JavaScript, because, uh, for example, we're using about uh, third, 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 third party JavaScript, and we built one big JavaScript, and uh, we uh, have from our web portal we have only one link for one javascript and for one css and uh, we use gulp to create one this big bundle for example yeah so, so far for, ve for web project it's a it's a normal situation yeah. because all, 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 all a lot of people use gulp yeah. for grant or web I, it's, it's a lot of packages now we have webpack we have wow. a lot of yeah. a, a lot okay. of tools for creating some bundles css or something like yeah that. And and uh, note package manager is uh is like I, I don't know one hundred fifty thousand now in in oh, it's a lot of stuff so you can you can use it for I don't know whether you but for for Node.js itself is very powerful I tell you very powerful yeah, but we yeah. Also use, for example, for web. we 
You can use uh, npm, for example, to share some environment between developers. For example, no, not 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 on no, uh, npm package JSON, package JSON file contains a lot of uh, I don't know a lot of reference. And for example, when uh, your developer uh, in joined to your team. Uh, he uh, downloaded some sources from uh, source control and then he ran, for example, uh, npm update and all these third, pa third party packages, for example, a lot of jQuery, um, Angular, uh, React or something like this, downloaded yeah. and installed it locally on the, in his computer. Uh, we use, for example, uh, package JSON to uh, uh, we, we don't uh, store these third party components in our source control. We uh, store it only our code, but for example, for this third party, when uh, to set up this dev environment, we use this package JSON file. And bef when the, the our new member downloaded sub source control, first he need to run npm update, and then uh, a lot of these packages downloaded from GitHub and installed locally on his machine. Mm. Okay. Hmm. You it's you need to share with us. <laughs> You need to share with us something. Yeah. Okay. Because it's very easy. It's very convenient. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other thing that you can use, for example, if you want to use Visual Studio, is for example Apache Cordova. It's a fully, it's a fully JavaScript. Everything is JavaScript. Uh, I also read, but I, I cannot confirm. It's just read from some news, for example, like for application, for application that is uh, in mobile phone, like in iPhone or Windows Phone or in Android. Uh, not not much people using uh, app actually. They use browser. There are more more or more people using except like music, Facebook, Twitter. Then you use the app, games. They use apps. But other than that, they use browser. That's why browser is uh, the the JavaScript and HTML. Uh, that's why that's why I know. That's why Microsoft heading there because they focus on there, like the Chakra Core, the Microsoft Edge, because. Uh, maybe the data saying like that, that people that use mobile, like me, I use more browsing instead of using app. That's me, but some people may be using app. But how many app you can put, put inside a mobile phone? That's why Apache Cordova is very uh, good in that. So you can create, for example, put it like this. You create full JavaScript, HTML, Apache Cordova, fully responsive exactly for browser. You don't have to change anything. HTML5 web standard. Run it good in here, and then you just can con you can convert it into a, a Windows Phone app, Android app, or iOS app, just like that. So in uh, using a so-called, maybe you know this. Have you heard Manifold.js? Yes. This is very powerful. I tell you. You already have a website, convert into app using this. You don't have to do anything. As long as your web is running responsive, just use this. NPM install manifold, then you can convert anything into iOS. And, and behind that, it's using Apache, Apache Cordova engine. So they convert that into an, uh, uh, an app. Uh, something like that, yeah. So that's uh, very powerful, Manifold JS. The other one that maybe you want to do, for example, for doing like this is uh, Vorlon JS. I love this one. You have, if you haven't tried this, I tell you, you try this, Vorlon JS. So this one is the same, like similar, yeah, similar like uh, browser sync. This one, but it's, you can do like that. But this one is, it's like what do you call it? It's like you can test in the in uh, multiple browser. Even the browser is not there. Maybe your you have a a friend that is outside in the US and you want to trust the browser together, and you'll see what happens. Uh, for example, I use uh, iPhone. I use desktop. Some of uh, you using, and then you can test together and you can see, and you can update and go back in here, uh, go back the result to the browser. So this one is a, a server. So you just install. It's open source. NPM again is NPM, yeah. And then you just type world on the server is running. Then you just connect anything that you do. It will synchronize. It will synchronize everywhere in the entire browser. That's the the, the yeah. 
Okay. So, any more questions? Maybe before I close. Yeah. Yes. So Microsoft is putting a lot of efforts on the TypeScript. TypeScript is. Yeah. So, what is the direction of the Microsoft? Are you planning to use the TypeScript in the next one, the platform for the development? Because I think that Angular JS two also have been used the TypeScript. Exactly, and it's fully TypeScript actually. Even the, the, the there's no controller in Angular two. It's different with Angular one, but uh, it's uh, it's using TypeScript for the uh, that one. Uh, that one actually I don't know the answer. Seriously, I don't know. So yeah, maybe someone can help. Why TypeScript? Yeah, but I know that TypeScript is powerful, but actually it's a JavaScript thing. It's the same thing. Yeah. They are going back to the language. It is closely followed the C sharp syntax more. So I'm I'm a little bit of uh, skeptical saying that okay, are we going to the JavaScript route or are we going back to the language standards? So which one, which direction is the developing system? Uh, okay. But trans uh, uh, transcript is uh, sorry, uh, TypeScript is only transpiler, isn't it? Is, uh, am I correct? It's only transpiler, yeah. Yeah, but it's you can run transpiler from Gulp, for example. Yeah, so it's uh, only a transpiler. Actually, at the end, it's JavaScript. Uh, you can target like ES5, ES6, for example. Yeah, it's only a transpiler. So it's only helping like less, less. At the end, it's CSS. Yeah, or using SAS, for example. Yeah, it's, it's similar, similar, very similar TypeScript. Yeah, it it you cannot run it in the browser. You cannot. You have to run it as a JavaScript. Then it will run in browser. It's, yeah, TypeScript is like that. So it's only like, what do you call it? Uh, helping hand for JavaScript. Yeah, adding this, adding that, but make it easy. You know, because uh, uh, to make it a structure. Yeah, uh, and I know that one is uh, they are heavily used in enterprise development, which is for example like they have a 1,000 developer around the world using the. Uh, uh, Visual Studio Team Service, doing this, doing that. They say TypeScript is is it's more manageable. Yeah. yeah. Every other second, you have one new JavaScript framework system. Yeah. So that's why the beginners are been moving on to the standardization of JavaScript. Yeah. And that's where the same is. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, but I don't know that, that well, whether they become like a standard as a de facto for, yeah, I, I don't know. Or maybe, maybe uh, the next JavaScript, uh, 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 ECMA script, I don't know, they will include that kind of, that understand, I don't know. That's why I don't know. We, we, yeah, that one we should, uh, you should ask. Uh, uh, Tim Oxley, Singapore JS. <laughs> he is the expert. Seriously, yeah, he's the one who knows everything regarding JavaScript. Yeah, you 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 you've been to Singapore JS? No, no. You should come. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> you should come. This is uh, uh yeah, that's the that's the place to learn JavaScript. Seriously, yeah. Yeah, my only the underlying point is that TypeScript is being heavily supported by the Microsoft, mm -hmm. but the big push came. Because Angular uh, JS two has been adopted by the company, yeah. So there is a two industry chains has been supported. Yeah. So I know, yeah. That's why I'm just trying to understand what is the future plans. Maybe yeah. Okay. Maybe someone can help. Yeah. Give some idea why Google use TypeScript. Yeah, because TypeScript is very powerful language. And so some new features to JavaScript, something like um, strong uh, typing or something like this. It's very useful because the code uh, looks like C sharp, for example. Yeah, in this case, uh, yeah, very useful for. It's it's, a, it's a very easy to write some code on, in TypeScript. Yeah. yeah. To me, case, yeah, yeah. Guys try to use it. Put it like this. To me, is TypeScript is a JavaScript thing. It's just like that. It's like Bubble JS, Babel, Bubble, Babel, Bubble, Bubble, ah, Bubble JS, or the other one is what? Babel, it's only transpiler also. Yeah, transpiler. Tools that transpile some. Yes, yes. Some JavaScript and other JavaScript. Similar. 
yeah. similar. So, for example, you wanna you wanna transpile to ES6 you, uh, from ES5, then you can use Bubble. You can. But if your browser already support ES6, then no need. You just use the ES6, fully ES6, more powerful vanilla JavaScript. It's more fast. Yeah, I love vanilla JavaScript. I don't like to use a lot of like framework. I like vanilla. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. Coffee script. Coffee script. Coffee script. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because of my, my time, that time, when I used, first time I used JavaScript. Everything is vanilla JavaScript. There's no framework that time. Uh, what, 1997, 90, that's the, the first time I play around with JavaScript. Yeah. So that's why, uh, yeah. Yep. OK. Any more questions? Yes. I uh, think SV.NET is using a different kind of CLR, right? The different kind of CLR? Ah, uh, can we just add reference to preview CLR? For the core? Yeah. Uh, here's the difference yeah, between the .NET framework and .NET core. It's very simple. The .NET framework has Windows component in it. It's very ties with Windows. So uh, the .NET, when, when it becomes open source, they remove all this stuff. So now the .NET core, it's only the core for .NET, which is the compiler, the CLR, and now the new one, maybe you, if you know, it's the so-called the RT, .NET RT, .NET runtime. So it's a machine code. You do not need to install any .NET. So for example, I create a .NET core, and then I compile native. So you just, all you have to do is just type .NET, what is the file, CS, uh, dash dash native. You don't need .NET to install. You can run in Mac. You can run in Linux. You don't need it to install, like for example, Java. You need to install the runtime. This one no need. It's a machine code, fully machine code, run by itself. Yeah. So if, put it like this: You have a .NET framework code. You run it without .NET framework. So actually, in this community, last time I ch challenged before, like six months ago. If this happened, not six months ago, when, when we heard about the open source.net, can someone create WPF? Exactly similar WPF, like in the Windows. But I can compile in Linux and Mac, <laughs> and it will run exactly like in Windows. OK, the Windows different, the button different, that's number two. Lah. OK, the same like Xamarin. But that one, if Singapore can do that, the .NET, Wow, any WPF that you already create in Windows, then you can just compile and run in Linux. Compile, run in, in, in Mac, for example. That will be a beautiful thing. Yeah, so .NET Core is removing the Windows part. Yeah, that's, that's what I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. So anyone wanna take the challenge? <laughs> I tell you, you can you can be rich, you know, if you can do that. <laughs> you just imagine a WPF file, the one that we already create for Windows, wow, perfectly enterprise application desktop, which is, you see, sometimes you go to the airport and you see the error, Windows error, ah, I know that, this, is, this one is using WPF. But you can compile with .NET Core and with generate uh, the, the machine code nat native for Linux or for Mac. Just imagine that. Wow. So there's no more there, there's no more boundary that .NET must be only Windows. There's no more boundary. You can run anywhere. And .NET Native already proved that. You, get, you just go to .NET CLI, still version not even one. <laughs> still, they're still doing it. The, the community is still doing it. Uh, plus the .NET team uh, from Microsoft, they're doing it to create that CLI. But you can create the native. I already tried. So the difference is uh, the file a little bit bigger, but you do not need .NET to run it. No need. It's just a normal file. It's like executable file, standalone. It, huh? Working command. Because we try to compile something and it's very difficult to run. For example, in Mac OS, yeah, because yeah, because a the lot of restrictions, a lot of uh, yes. Currently, it's still like that. For example, uh, we cannot create more complex than that because it's only yeah, the very yeah. But the, the, the target that I know from, from the .NET team is they're going to make it like that, native. So the, you can choose. 
you can use the CLR, meaning that you install the .NET, you run the .NET, or you compile as native. You don't need any .NET, you just run it. It's like C++ compile, you output machine code, just like that, <laughs> exactly. You have to recompile it if you are using different platform, right? Oh yes, of course, but it's a straight, straight way. It's the same code, one code for all, same, the same thing. Yeah, you don't have to change anything. For example, this file, the one that I, I show it to you, I'm using Windows, isn't it? I can just bring to Linux and compile it exactly the same. Yeah, exactly the same. You don't have to do any exactly the same. And the command line, okay, last one before I close, it's this one. You need to install this. Minus G, yo, generator, ASP.NET, okay? This one is if you uh, develop using Mac or Linux, then you need to install this. This is also open source, okay? Yo man. So uh, yeah, let me show you just a little bit. So everything is, is in the node package, okay? Now I can do like this. Yo man doctor, what is this? <laughs> Something new. <laughs> okay. Just pretend to know what's going on. What is this? Okay, still. So this is going to pull the the generator. Exactly like Express. You pull it and then you can uh, create uh, Express or PHP or a Ruby, whatever. So you can do like this. Yo ASP net. There, you can choose the one that exactly like in Visual Studio, the one that I show it to you. This one, the web application, this one, just do like that, put a name, blah, blah, blah. There, you see, they create all. And all you have to do is DNU store, DNU build, DNX web. But this is the current one. So the latest one will be .NET. There is no more DNU, there is no more DNX. It's just .NET, and you can compile as a native. So this one, your website can be machine code <laughs> without .NET. <laughs> just imagine that. Wow, I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. Can you write under Nginx? Nginx, yeah, can. This one can run. Yeah, oh, I already tried that. Nginx, anything. Apache, run. This one is run. This one is like, oh, what do you call it? It's just run. <laughs> it's just run. Yeah, seriously. It's just run anywhere. I try it everywhere. It's like, uh, yeah, so far it's run everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I haven't found a place that is, uh, any server is not run, yeah. Of course there's a way to, yeah, it's not, you just go to docs.asp.net lah. Docs.asp.net. Vnext, latest, yeah. And then you, for example, Ah, here. Installing is been five on Linux. Now it's actually the record name. And it's all in here, you see? In Ubuntu. Just do like this. Yeah. Huh? Into this instruction dot work. Uh <laughs> you need to do a lot of a lot of things <laughs> to run something like this on Mac what? or for example on Linux. What? <laughs> yeah. Because it's not running. <laughs> huh? Yeah. If you do all these uh, all these steps, it's not running on Linux. Because uh, there are a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of things that doesn't uh, oh. describe here. For example, you, you go to Stack Overflow and try to one well, exception by one <laughs> try to. Well, solve I, this actually, problem. I managed to make make it run. <laughs> yeah, but we we can do something like a, a try to do something like a lap, for example, to run this, but. Yeah, it's very difficult because oh, okay. it takes a lot of time to run something on the Linux or on Mac, for example, because yeah, yeah. because it's still an RC and a lot of uh, changes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so just wait for the release version one. Uh, I think it will be on build 2016. They will re maybe they will announce in build. Yeah, which is on uh, what April? Build 2016. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all. We so we already. Uh, yeah, over then, yeah, over 9 p.m. Okay, so maybe any, any question you can drop. And 
if someone can do demo for the ne next month meetup, Angular 2. <laughs> Seriously, I want to try it because it's not working for me. <laughs> I have to try it. Yeah. But if someone can, can share next month, uh, yeah, that will be good for, for us. Yeah, Angular 2 using ASP.NET. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's all then. Uh, I would like to say thank you and see you next month. Okay? Yeah.